Hey folks, uh, so this is a video I've been meaning to get to for a while, and, well, quite frankly, I meant to do this about a month ago, but as you all know, uh, stuff's been rather busy, crazy lately. Um, but anyway, I want to talk about Game Boy Advance games, uh, specifically ones that have batteries. Now, I've already done a video on uh, Game Boy and Game Boy Color games, it's the exact same thing uh, for those two. Uh, I'll throw a link in the description, and for the most part, the process is the exact same. Uh, now, this game does use a battery for saving, as Mega Man something or other. In this particular case, the battery in this game is still perfectly fine. Um, I don't play this game, so I don't really care anyway. But if you have a game that uses SRAM... It will use a battery, and if it no longer saves, chances are pretty good that the battery itself is bad. Um, all you need to do, buy a replacement a CR1616 tabbed battery, solder that in, Bob Gianti. Uh, if it no longer saves, I mean, obviously you won't have to back up your save, because there's, there'll be nothing to back up, but there you go. There are some games that do actually use a battery for Game Boy Advance. Most of them do not, but some do. Uh, if you have, you know, a bootleg game, something like this, something with a black blob of epoxy, uh, and it doesn't save, chances are you have a completely different problem, but you can still add batteries to these. These use, uh, tab batteries as well. These are the two pads, but you'll, you'll notice these are 180 degree offset. These are 360 degree offset. You have to do some funky wiring. I think Kyle, uh, made a nice video on that but I don't really want to spend too much time going into the differences what I want to talk about specifically are legit games OEM games um, bootlegs pretty easy to figure out but they're not very reliable anyway there is another type of game and I figure that's probably what most of you care about and it's for the most part the batteries that are dead we have Pokemon Ruby here, uh, and the same applies f to Sapphire and Emerald, you know, any of the region, uh, like Japanese, PAL, whatever. Uh, this battery does not back up the save, like, you do not need this battery to save. This battery powers the real-time clock circuit over here that gives your game um, day-night cycle, berries, etc. So if we boot this game up, um, da, 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 da. you get this error message. The internal battery has run dry. The game can be played. However, clock-based events will no longer occur. That's because the third-gen Pokemon games, Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald specifically, like I said, they do have a battery. There it is right there. Um, but it's only for real-time clock. It's not for save. Whereas this game also has a battery, exact same battery, but this game doesn't have real-time clock. It's just for the save. Uh, so the second-gen Pokemon games, those use the battery for real-time clock and saving. And the first-gen Pokemon games use the battery as well, but those are just for saving, no real-time clock. And if you want to verify you know, that the battery itself is dead, take a multimeter, put it on volts and probe the two big solder blobs. We can see my battery is at a whopping 0 0.07 volts, which makes sense. I mean, I've had this game a very long time. I've had this game since 2003 or four, or whenever the hell they came out. Um, but if we check the other game that still saves, we can see my battery still at 3.21 volts. So if this one were dead, we would need to replace that. But since it's not, I'm just going to go ahead and button it back up. And it's just a regular tri-wing screw, or tri-point screw, excuse me. Um, all right, so replacement. You can order cheap batteries on AliExpress or eBay. Uh, they're just these tabbed nonsense off-brand. They work fine. That's clearly what I've already got in here, but it's already dead. Um, I don't know when I replaced this, but it wasn't recent. Another option, you can purchase these, and this is my very last one, 
on DigiKey, these are Panasonic lithium 3-volt coin cells, and these are much higher quality, have much better life expectancy, uh, but they don't have the little yellow band on it. It's just a visual thing. It doesn't make any difference. I'm going to use the cheap battery because I'm not actually going to play this game, but it's all the same for the video purpose. So one thing we will have to do once we get this out of the packaging here. Oh, before I even get to that, don't try soldering with the game in the casing. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. If you do that, with the game in the casing. You know, this solder joint is really easy to get to, but this one's really close to the edge, and it's really easy to accidentally hit the iron on the edge of the casing, and um, you're gonna ruin the case if you make any direct contact with a hot iron. This is not a hot iron, iron, so I can show off, no problem. But just, just take the extra few seconds, pop it out of the case. You're not hurting anything by doing that. All right. So before we get to desoldering and resoldering, there are a couple things we need to pay attention to. So this battery is labeled. This bottom we can see is the positive. The PCB itself is also labeled. If we take a look here, we can see there's a little positive right there. And it's probably easier to see on your board because mine's all covered in flux. But underneath all this flux, you can scrape off or just leave it because it really doesn't matter. Uh, there should be a little negative symbol right there. <clears throat> uh, but one more thing, these batteries that you get online aren't quite what we need to replace with. You can see the tabs themselves are, um, flip that around. You see there, the, this one is bent, but on this one, they're both bent is what I'm trying to say. So what we need to do is we need to actually bend these a little bit more so that it fits better. I'm just going to get my pliers because it's easier than tweezers. And we just want to give it a little bit of extra bend so that it clears the flash chip. And that's all we need to do. The Game Boy Color process is the exact same, except you don't need to bend those tabs. All right, so now let's get the soldering iron. And we need to tin this up just a little bit. Add some solder to those pads. Just like that. And we'll go in here and lift this up. Just like that. And then we can add this one back in to replace it. Just like that. And that's all we need to do. If you want to, you can go back in and clean these up a little. But it really doesn't make any difference. Let's throw this in the case and see how it works. Excellent. 
switched it on. All right, notice I didn't get that error this time. That means the game actually recognizes the new cell and we should be good to go, right? Not quite. So there is actually one extra step we need to take for Pokemon games specifically. If you're just doing a save battery, you're done. That's it. But if you're doing Pokemon, there is one more step because there is actually a... Um, I don't necessarily want to call it a bug because it's more of an oversight. These games were never really programmed to... Uh, to account for this situation. Um, so long story short, what's happening is there's uh, there's two clocks that the game pays attention to. The actual hardware clock that we just fixed by replacing the battery and the software clock in the game that keeps track of the time elapsed and uh, uh, time till next event or something like that. Um, basically, this game could have been taken for, I don't know, 15 some odd years before the battery died. Probably not, but just for an example. That would mean the game thinks it is, uh, just for an example, January 23rd, the year 2015. All right, because the real time clock initializes to January 1st, the year 2000. Um, so if the game thinks it's January 23rd, 2015, and then you replace the battery, it's going to reset back to January twenty or January first, two thousand, and so the software clock in this game is going to look at the clock and go, "Okay, it's not going to be tomorrow for another fifteen years or so, give or take," and that means your your berries won't grow, you can't do the lottery, uh, stuff like that. Shulk Cave should still work, but. Berries, lottery, no go. There's a few other things, uh, especially in Pokemon Emerald, and this glitch does affect Pokemon Emerald. <clears throat> now, I will throw a link to the wiki page that I have compiled in the description that has a bunch of other fixes, but I just want to go over a couple really easy fixes that we can do. Um, just bear with me one second. Let me get my DS. So the easiest fix, of course, is to just start a new game. You start a new game, it's going to reset all those variables, roll the clock back, everything's fine. Another fix you can take, uh, if you have like a, a GBX or something, you can dump your save and then edit it in PK Hex. There's, um, there's an official, unofficial event in the game. What I mean is the event is actually coded into the game itself. It was just never, they never did anything with it. So there's no way to actually activate it legitimately. But that event allows you to reset the clock. That'll work. Um, another option that I have used personally and have verified that it works because I use it on my Emerald. Uh, if you take a DS and you'll need an R4 or in my case an Ace card. And it has to be a DS or a DS Lite because you have to be able to put your game in here. Let me show you. There's a couple ways we can do this. So, sorry, I just need to power cycle this DS. Of course I choose to use it even though it has these issues. Sometimes it just doesn't recognize the game. We want to make sure that it recognizes the game. But we still want to boot into the R4. Now, there are a couple different options. We can use the homebrew, oops, Pokemon Chest. That'll allow you to change it. I believe that changes the software offset. We can use Save Game Manager to just dump the save onto the SD card, take the SD card, pop it in the computer, do the PK hex thing, etc. Or we can use this homebrew called RTC Read. There is a Game Boy Advance version of this, but I prefer the DS version. It's just quite a bit easier. How it works, you boot it up. Nothing on the top screen. We're just looking at the bottom screen. You boot it up, pop your game in, and then hit Start. It sees that I have Pokemon Ruby, and it can see that the current date is, what a surprise, January 1st, 2000. So we want to, ref we want to edit this. 
Now, I have no idea what the date was to reset it. Oops. Here I am with my American assumptions of our date standard. There we go. Yeah, I have no idea what the date is, ex what it's expecting the date to be, but I know a good way to reset it past that date, and I'll just set it to the current date. Now, week day, I don't know what this is and why it's asking. If it has a calendar system, it should know. But I'm assuming Sunday is one, or Sunday is the first day, Saturday is the last day, so we'll set, since today's Saturday, I'll set that to six. Uh, the time is about 2.18 p.m. But doesn't make too big of a difference because it's going to, there's a software offset too. But as long as we set it to the current time, that's definitely past the original. So that should fix it. Pop that back in there. And no error, same as before. And again, because that was the hardware offset, the software might still think it's a different... Oh, this isn't my save. Well, what you can do, you can go to Moss Deep, or not Moss Deep, I'm in Moss Deep, you can go to Little Root and um, check the time on the wall in your hometown. And that'll let you know what the current time is, and then you can... You know, do a little bit of math, say if the actual time is 2.30 and it shows as 4.30, just set it back two hours. And that'll allow you to set the time in the game. It really doesn't matter too much because there's no day-night cycle in these third-gen games. So, I mean, it's, it is what it is, but that's how you fix it. Now, like I said, there are a couple of other methods. And like I said, especially this only applies to... Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald. Any other game that uses um, just the battery to hold the save, all you have to do is pop it in your battery and you're done. Uh, but otherwise, that's it guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, any questions, comments, hit me up down below and we'll have a discussion if that's, if that's, what, if that's what you want. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just rambling at this point. I'm going to go get some water. Thanks for watching.